My name is Jaroslav Michalik. I'm an Android developer. I work uh, in Krakow in a startup called Telixo. I am also tech mentor in a student startup, Jakse Maszker, former Be Happy. We cure depression. Uh, and I am also founder of another startup called Pablo. It's mainly entertainment industry. Okay, so let's get straight to the point. Why do we write unit tests, like in every technology? We want to have our code to be maintainable. We want to know that we write something once and this behavior uh, is just like expected. But what makes a test actually a unit test? Uh, the first thing is that we have to check how behaves single logical unit. So, for example, uh, we have some use case which, after execution, will return an uh, empty string and give some preconditions. We execute this use case and we are checking uh, if uh, this outcome is equal to expected. And sometimes uh, we use given when then syntax. It's almost the same, and uh, if you try to design your unit test in that way, uh, you have clear, nice structure. Given use case, when I execute, it should uh, return empty string. But that kind of assertions are very boring. But we have to uh, write that kind of stuff uh, to check if unit converter works as, as expected or uh, JSON mappings uh, JSON mappings returns proper objects. But the more interesting case. Uh, is parameterized test. Like in previous example, does my converter produces expected output? I am convert converting here uh, meters to kilometers with given precision. So let's write parameterized test with JUnit4. There are a lot of mess in this code. We have to use uh, use parameterized runner by annotation, and the whole test is actually parameterized. And uh, our arguments uh, must be provided in the static way in the companion object. That's not idiomatic Kotlin code, and that's not uh, <laughs> what we are used to as Kotlin developers. So let's run this test. Wait a minute. Okay, it's running and we see that for first argument it passed, for second argument it failed. We don't have any more info, we have to look for it in the logs. Okay, but that was JUnit4. We already have JUnit5 and JUnit platform. And in JUnit5, we can parameterize only test method. So that's pretty convenient that we can mix parameterized tests uh, with just normal assertions. And we don't have any more any static providers, but we can delegate it to the class, to separate method, which uh, extends some kind of argument provider. Uh, of course, for primitive types or enums, uh, there is special annotation that argument source is my enum uh, values. Okay, and we'll try to run this test. <coughs> and we have uh, this outcome with uh, our input class. This is data class. Uh, so uh, we have nice two string implementation.
And I just noticed <laughs> that JUnit5 uh, indexes our arguments from 1, while JUnit4 does the same thing, but uh, I think from 0. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe that's the difference. But we don't want to write our code like that. We, I personally dislike annotations. And I'd like to create parameterized test uh, with something like for loop. OK, so we have framework called Kotlin test. And there is uh, something called specification. We extend that class and write huge lambda where our test source is. Uh, and as framework designers promised us, there should be easy collection testing. So let's try this out. We have uh, this string specification. That means uh, uh, after string we write another lambda. And this will be test method signature. And we give some preconditions. And for all parameters, uh, it should be kilometer. And as you noticed, there is also infix assertion, a very nice feature of Kotlin test. So let's run it. And wait, we don't have, uh, sorry, we don't have any of uh, these parameters listed here. We've got this only in logs. And I think it's a huge problem that all of the tests failed and we got to check our uh, gradle log or build log to have information that for this uh, element uh, is actually failed. But there is nice message uh, from this infix annotation. Our test is just like a sentence in English language. Okay, so next. There is framework called uh, spec. Uh, previously, in the Java world, many people used Spock framework for writing specifications and some BDD-related stuff. And what is important for us it's that it's very flexible. Just like in Kotlin test, we have this uh, lambda structure, no annotations. Uh, we can easily uh, make test groups uh, and nest these tests. We have this uh, describe uh, function that creates group. And in this test group, we create in for each uh, stream another test cases. So we should run it. And as you see, <coughs> we have a very clear test output. Very clear because we implicitly said that this uh, tests method signature should have param and expected. Uh, we can also provide message why it failed. OK, but for now, let's leave assertions, and we will scratch the surface of mocking. We have a framework called Mokito, and its usage with Java is pretty great, but when it comes to uh, writing idiomatic Kotlin code, it's, uh, <laughs> it's not that easy. We have, of course, parameters uh, runner, this many annotations, annotation driven development like uh, many Java developers love. Yeah, and since it's annotation uh, based, it cannot be uh, final, it cannot be val since this runner will inject mocks just after. Uh, and when we say 
what should happen when the mock class will be invoked. Uh, Mockito uses reserved word in Kotlin, so we have to write it in backticks, uh, as you, I hope, see. But there is a framework called Kotlin Mockito, and we have more, s uh, more nice stuff. It's basically a set of extensions. Uh, yes, this mock method is inline, inline reified. So, uh, and under the hood, all uh, strange Mokito stuff happens. Uh, the next thing is that we have a nice lambda syntax uh, on method the return elements, just uh, DSL way. Uh, and the rest uh, should be the same. Additionally, uh, there is uh, a very good method. We don't have to type when, like in a regular Mokito, but there is function called whenever. All right, and this is JVM-based uh, uh, Mokito framework. There exists also a framework called MockK. It has similar syntax to uh, Mokito, uh, but it has huge advantage that may be used uh, multi-platform. It has its own modules for Android, for instrumented test, and so on. Okay, we only scratched the surface of mocking, but I have uh, some final thoughts to say about that. Don't mock final classes, even uh, if you have fancy plugin. Uh, for Mokito to do that. It's, I think it's better to hide behavior behind interface. Uh, sorry, expose behavior, but hide implementation. Uh, reuse your mocks carefully, especially when you are writing specifications in that huge lambda. Uh, when your object may be stateful, uh, it will go uh, undeterministic. And the last thing is that you should extract common mocks to separate class. Once uh, you do that, your colleagues from team will thank you. Okay. We don't like uh, huge presenters, uh, huge constructors and writing uh, all that by hand. We use dependency injection frameworks. I use mostly Dagger. And I got all of this for free. But when it comes to write unit test and mock all of these uh, dependencies, uh, it will end up writing uh, the, the same constructor uh, ever again. So what I like to do is to create factory method and uh, provide default arguments. Even if you use dependency injection framework, you won't probably use it in your, your, in your unit test. So it's a good uh, thing to create those uh, maybe so-called factory methods. Uh, and in your test, then you can uh, just mock only that dependency with uh, behavior changes and create presenter. All of this uh, is provided by default arguments. Uh, and verify uh, what do you need to verify your test is short and clean. All right. So the next, next uh, thing is how to handle unit tests in the mobile world. We have some uh, common patterns for designing graphical user interfaces, and those patterns apply uh, to Android, to iOS, uh, even to, uh, to web. For example, we have model view presenter that's 
one of uh, possible implementation, we have view and presenter hidden behind interfaces. They also extend uh, proper base classes. Okay, and uh, testing. Uh, this model view presenter is basically verifying uh, if uh, proper methods of view were invoked. For example, we say that on presenter start, we should load uh, some data, and we are verifying uh, if uh, the view was uh, invoked with a proper method with given parameters. Uh, okay, but most of uh, model view presenter, most of MVP pattern uh, has some flow, maybe uh, sometimes attached to activity lifecycle or something like that. But in most cases, we have to attach view uh, we have to start presenter and finally detach this view. Uh, so it's nice to write some extension method for your uh, model view flow and inside this flow write your test. That's pretty convenient when uh, it comes to releasing some uh, resources and you or you have to uh, additionally assert that after view detach there won't be uh, an, uh, an uh, interactions with view. Okay, another popular pattern is model view view model and in Android world it's uh, it's promoted by Google in architecture components uh, and this is one possible implementation I also use here base view model. Uh, these, proper these properties are exposed to view in uh, XML, so we can just uh, create reference method in uh, XML, sign up click, and then uh, do what we need to do. And this will trigger uh, our loading indicator. Okay, so how do we test uh, that kind of view model? Oh, well, that's pretty obvious that we should assert uh, what is the state of this uh, progress and uh, what happened with router. So we mock use case behavior and verify, verify if uh, this property has changed or if uh, this method was invoked. But uh, there is an issue <laughs> with view model because uh, in Android class, on cleared method where uh, we should close all our resources is protected. So we cannot simply invoke that uh, in unit test. So especially for that case, uh, in my base view model, I created additional method close, which will be invoked uh, in on cleared method, which is uh, managed by system. Okay, and we will create extension method for our unit test, so that uh, we will be sure that our test is executed within this view model flow. Okay, so it will look like this. We invoked some start method in a base uh, view model. We execute our test, and then we close our resources, just like we are simulating that system uh, called onCleared. Okay, and we have another pattern. That's probably my favorite for, for some cases. Model view intent, and it is, uh, well, view isn't uh, dummy anymore in this pattern. We have uh, this event stream flow modeled with Eric's observable, uh, and only one void or unit method render. So our presenter responsibility 
will be to subscribe to all the subservables and render proper view states. And how do we uh, make some assertions in here? We verify what? Uh, especially for model view intent, I uh, use something I like to call view robot. So, especially for uh, our test cases, we can create additional layer of abstraction. As I said before, uh, that in MVI it is highly reactive. Uh, so, we will model these streams with subjects. And uh, when it comes to render state, we will just add it uh, to the list. And in the end, uh, we will, of course, uh, assert if every uh, state that we wanted was actually rendered. Okay, and this is example of model view intent specification written with spec. So on the send message, we are testing some kind of chat flow. Uh, we will actually send, send this message uh, and assert that all of view states will be rendered in given order. Uh, so that's pretty powerful tool. I also created here extension method to not write uh, assert on a list like every time. And it actually uh, works for most of MVI flows. OK. And here I provided uh, some DSL-like uh, code. So let's think how we can write testing DSL with Kotlin. Uh, some time ago, when I uh, first met Spec, I really fell into it. I was like this guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I forgot about JUnits, write only specifications. But uh, <laughs> Spec plugin for IntelliJ or Android Studio wasn't very stable back then. So it was, it were hard times. <laughs> And I started to create specifications like for everything. And it has many benefits. It makes uh, your test your documentation. It fits great to BDD. Uh, when you write your specification, uh, you will ask yourself twice, how do I expect that my system will work? And it helps you separate implementation from behavior. Yeah, I mean, that's the solid, one of solid principle. So let's consider another spec specification. Given something on action, and here we will execute our test flow. This is example from uh, one of my app. And I have this nice grouping of tests. I verify uh, exactly what will happen in given scenarios. I have distinguished this first login and login once again. And it really, it really looks nice uh, in continuous integration flow. OK, but we want to also write uh, DSLs. And we are already familiar with spec. So let's see what can what spec offers us. We have uh, two basic building blocks, group and test. Oh, there's many annotations processed by spec engine, and uh, as you see, it's marked as DSL. But what is important for us? Uh, this function group uh, has its description and its body. These are uh, properties not relevant to us uh, for now. And in test, we also have description, 
what will happen, what will be displayed in the IntelliJ console. Should we skip this test? And of course, test body when where we will perform uh, assertion. Okay, so let's try to write uh, a simple DSL building block. Let's suppose we have our Rx disposable uh, and we are often checking if uh, this disposable is disposed. So we will uh, make extension method for uh, spec lambda for test suit, assert disposed, and uh, on each invocation of this method, there will be a created a test group with this signature checking if disposable is actually disposed. Another example. Let's suppose we have uh, some collection and we, we want to uh, write our parameterized test in a like DSL way. Uh, so here we uh, have another extension method, generic. For this collection, we are passing body. We are creating a method, test method in it, assert element with this signature, don't skip it, and with uh, we are invoking here this test body. Okay, for and we can use it like this. We have some list, uh, and for each element, check if uh, given element is uh, actually lowercase. Okay, so we are creating these extensions because we want to keep it nice and clean and have it like English uh, language, not uh, some weird uh, programming construct. Uh, with this DSL and spec, we can have custom method signatures uh, in fixed notation, which is important part of uh, creating DSL. And by writing DSLs, uh, we are separating behavior from implementation. So that's pretty important. Okay, summarizing. Uh, we have to write good code, uh, quality code, so that next person that uh, <laughs> sits down to our projects uh, you know, can actually do something with it. Uh, and I think in our test code we should apply those Kotlin standards that we force in our production code. So for example, it's immutability. Uh, we are pretending we sometimes write functional code, so <laughs> we don't want any uh, mutable properties and unexpected behavior which comes with this. Uh, we don't like static anymore because it's Java way, and uh, it also can uh, may cause some uh, issues. Uh, and of course, we want this functional lambda style uh, and not annotation driven development. Like I said before, I don't like annotation style. Okay. And when you apply those Kotlin standards, just make your unit test more enjoyable. What testing, uh, what mocking framework should you use? I recommend this Mockito with Kotlin extensions or MockK because you can write them in idiomatic way uh, and don't you don't use JUnit for anymore, please. Choose assertion framework that uh, that gives you clear output. We saw uh, how uh, 
uh, how different frameworks behaves with uh, this parameterized test. But uh, I mean, here by simple assertion, what was the output? Uh, what is the expected output? There are plenty of uh, nice assertion frameworks. Uh, so choose just that one that fits you. OK, don't be afraid to introduce some abstraction to your code. Like in uh, that model view intent flow, where we cannot just uh, mock our view in uh, one line, we provide uh, additional layer. And then uh, testing is just uh, asserting which state was uh, rendered in uh, which order. Uh, and also, write your own DSL, especially when you have some kind of base classes. You have your presenter or view model or anything flow. Uh, just to don't repeat yourself. Because uh, who has time for that? Yeah. And last but not least, create specifications. It helps uh, understand your product better. It becomes living documentation. And you can get rid of annotations. OK, and I think that's all for now. You can find all examples, most of examples, in this repo. And you can reach me on Twitter. Uh, and sometimes I write something uh, on blog. So thanks for, for your attention. <laughs>